video, I'm going to talk about a workshopping activity I did around vocabulary and computer science and how, you know, taking a look at some research, some best practices around utilizing vocabulary to teach computer science and assess students' knowledge of computer science can be incredibly beneficial to working with teachers to help them understand some different instructional strategies that they might want to try with teaching computer science. This workshopping activity was also part of an experience of developing a common assessment for students with computer science and digital learning. So this activity starts with a form in which the participants filled out with some specific questions around, you know, how they like to teach, utilizing vocabulary, whether or not they see the value of specific terms of vocabulary with teaching computer science concepts, a review of literature related to computer science with tiered vocabulary and the use of vocabulary for a variety of purposes. And ultimately, they came away, I feel like, with some amazing thoughts around, you know, what their best practices were, how they've been identifying some strategies for teaching with vocabulary and computer science. And at the end of the day, I think they were better positioned to begin developing and updating curriculum that targeted specific vocabulary terms related to computer science. Um, ultimately, it's a vocabulary development lesson um, and a workshopping practice that allows teachers to really think about the value of vocabulary and instruction and how it can benefit them in their ability to engage students and help them retain concepts that eventually scaffold over time. Um, you know, and connecting vocabulary to their instructional practices. So. This process was begun after we had initiated um, beginning to review vocabulary as a powerful part of teaching computer science. And so my first step with this process was to actually tier the vocabulary so that the tiered vocabulary that the teachers chose to use was um, particularly identified with the instructional level that the student's going to be learning at. So essentially, we would take some vocabulary and tier it towards whether the term was introduced to students, whether the term was going to be reinforced with students, or we were asking students to reach mastery with it. So after doing some of that work, um, you know, this was an important step at trying to connect the instructional goals with the tier vocabulary to the digital learning and computer science teaching in the curriculum. So I created this form based on asking these teachers and collecting their feedback on how they saw this process going. So essentially we have vocabulary instruction in digital learning, computer science and robotics, subject areas you teach, grade levels you teach, and starting with where are you placing an emphasis in vocabulary in your instructional window? Select the five most accurate ways you do it in your teaching. Please add another if not listed. So with the focus on vocabulary, you know, thinking about pre-assessments, post-assessments, aligned and assigned with a unit, aligned and assigned with a lesson, the vocabulary integrated within the standards, word walls or other classroom environment features. So they have, you know, maybe some of the vocabulary words on the walls or, you know, some definitions or descriptions on the walls, vocabulary embedded within a lecture, taught using repetition with digital quizzes or reviews. So essentially, you know, reviewing and creating assessments around um, the, the, the computer science vocabulary, or is it specifically taught with a skill component, build a specific program, build this, design that, and so on. So this group of teachers, just to kind of give the background information, were middle school teachers. So their, their level of teaching did flex between teaching students specifically around introducing computer science concepts and programming languages, and then building them up to even a high level where they're ready to, um, you know, do more programming in high school. So the next question here on this form is, what are three strategies with students that you have identified that support vocabulary understanding within your instruction? And so I was basically asking these teachers, what types of strategies with students did they identify to support the use of vocabulary. So what did they find that helped or worked kind of with their process when teaching? And then I did want them to check out um, some of the findings in this document here. This is a, re a review of the current research of vocabulary instruction. I'll make this a little bit larger. This is a great document uh, from the National Reading Center of Technical Assistance. 
Um, and I cited some specific um, pages of this document for them to check out and review. Um, and we'll get to that in a moment. But this essentially covers um, frequency of exposure to targeted vocabulary words, explicit instruction of targeted vocab, and questions and language engagement. So this is to get build a framework around the value of tiered vocabulary in lessons and 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 what is most important when using vocabulary as an essential way to teach. Specifically, it's very important in computer science, or most contexts too. Provide direct instruction of vocabularies for a specific text, repetition, multiple exposures to vocabulary items are important. Vocabulary words should use those that the learner will find useful in many contexts. Vocabulary tasks should be restructured as necessary. Vocabulary learning is effective when it entails active engagement that goes beyond definitional knowledge. Computer technology can be used effectively to help teach vocabulary. Vocabulary can be acquired through incidental learning. Dependence on a single vocabulary instruction method will not result in optimal learning. So those were some of the findings and other research brought into this study um, and some of the analysis. So just an interesting part of research that I referenced through this form. And I, I asked that they review those findings. So I asked them to select two of those findings identified on the first two pages and related to their work. Which finding did you select first? Why did you select this finding? Which best practice to a vocabulary assessment work can be informed by this finding? What is an essential question that we have about this finding due to the work we are undertaking? Essential questions are designed to encourage further questioning about a particular subject. They're intended to spark conversation about the subject rather than simply providing a factual answer to the question. Then based on their second finding that they identified, why did they find that, you know, a select this one? What, what best practice to our vocabulary assessment work can be informed by this finding? What is an essential question that we have about this finding due to the work we are undertaking? So I also integrated the multi-tiered multi -tiered systems of support, MTSS framework, um, and ask them to review the vocabulary strategies related on page 114 of this document. So this is a, a district's, uh, the school district of Lee County's um, document on MTSS and how they integrated it. It's a great document. They did a great job with this. Long, but they did a great job. So what I asked here was essentially to review this page on suggested classroom strategies for phonolo phonological awareness, Phonics and fluency, vocabulary, comprehension, and then also with math, some some ways that vocabulary was embedded within instruction. And this just provided some ways to pre-teach vocabulary, talked about pre-teaching vocabulary in a variety of contexts, using multiple modalities, emphasizing key vocabulary in different ways, provide increased exposure to oral language, pair with movement. Some good ideas in here just to get the topic of vocabulary started. So the next section is selecting focus areas and strategies for vocabulary instruction. Which two strategies on that page do you think are the most effective? What strategies should we consider or know, work, or why in our process of tiered vocabulary assessment? What strategies can we add when we think about our process of tiered vocabulary? What you see identified as topics for the beginner, intermediate, and advanced in this guide. So I ask that they begin to start thinking about beginner intermediate and advanced concepts of vocabulary and what changes when you start to think about it that way and specifically to their teaching process like if you're introducing a word a beginning level word how is that different than an intermediate level word and then advanced level particularly how it relates to computer science and the final reflection was really around the biggest challenge of this process of assessment um, being specific as possible um, how much time it takes, finding words, what are a variety of student needs, and what are the specific challenges of students' vocabulary comprehension as it relates to computer science, digital literacy, and robotics, you know, particularly with this type of vocabulary. Are there things we're not thinking about with the tiered vocabulary at this level? Do you, How do you think students at other levels should be prepared for this type of assessment if students are coming up to this level and there's a higher focus on vocabulary? Is there something we should think about? What are current gaps in our process of instruction with the vocabulary or in the instruction of digital learning, computer science, and robotics at different grade levels we should identify? So basically a little bit of a gap analysis and what can I do to support you better in this process? So what I did was I then took the results of this form and curated them into a way to kind of view them on this document here. And essentially I called this process unpacking computer science vocabulary assessment process. So, um, complete reviewing resources and completing the form of the first step, uh, review the feedback, which we did as a group, 
and then address next steps and ideas. So just to give you an idea of the types of responses that um, were received here, most of these were kind of multiple choice with some additional feedback here um, on specific things. Um, where are you placing an emphasis in vocabulary in your instructional window? Select the five most accurate ways you do it in your teaching. Please add another if not listed. So options here around pre-assessment and post-assessment, word walls, um, you know, those were the, the first kind of recommendations. Um, most people chose the pre-assessment, post-assessment, um, word walls, other classroom environments taught within the lecture, um, align and assign with a lesson. So this was the sequence. So you can see the pre-assessment was by far the first option taken. Word walls was first by some people, but then also align and assign with a lesson, um, taught with repetition. So some of that taught with repetition, of course, is maybe further back in the options in which they're, they're using it because they are identifying and aligning it with other with other content, whether it's a, an assessment that they've done or they've put something up on their walls or they're specifically aligning it with a lesson. Also specifically taught within a skill component, sometimes in the beginning of this process of, a lot of assigning vocabulary, um, having it specifically within a component of a lesson and, and being able to focus on it doesn't always come up as the, the first item. So what are three strategies with students that you have identified that support vocabulary understanding within your instruction? Use multiple modalities to present vocabulary, pre-assessment and post-assessment, repetition project-based, repetition of words, providing alternative examples, recalling definitions when using the word in context, direct instruction, model the use of the language, provide visual relationships, using the word in their writing and papers they turn in, repetition during lecture. So a lot of different ways um, that vocabulary is integral to how computer science is taught. Um, the different ways students represent the understanding of the words, the different ways they're using the words, pre and post assessments, of course, repetition, um, alternatives, direct instruction, visual relationships is great, um, and also presentations of projects, whether or not they're using the terms. So what this group found particularly important was more collab time um, that, you know, to help do this process, um, grade level collaboration, um, and a common understanding of what, you know, what they're trying to accomplish. I also wanted to ask like what they saw as their gaps, um, with this process. Definitely having common definitions of terms and making sure that everyone was on the same page with specific words. Um, additional focus is on the number of times students met within a course as opposed to another course. Time to actually do the work. Um, especially with the depth of computer science, the time to collaborate. And also not all students have a particular course, so maybe there are gaps when they eventually do get into some of these courses. <clears throat> How do you think students at other levels should be prepared for this type of assessment? Um, of course, more vocabulary, um, positive experience in computer-related courses, um, see the value in learning computer science prior to being at the middle school level. What are specific challenges of students' vocabulary comprehension as it relates to computer science, digital literacy, and robotics instruction and assessment? Retaining what they learn. Um, different language levels, ELL, special needs, etc. cetera. Um, making the terms engaging to the content is super important. Finding ways to get buy-in from the students, understand that these terms will have a big payoff at the end. Establish a baseline with our vocabulary. Some, some vocabulary could be new to students at certain levels. What is your biggest challenge to, to this process of assessment? Separating out this type of assessment adds more to a unit that we already have a short time with. It can be time consuming. Finding ways to blend vocabulary into final assessments, incorporate vocabulary into different to, into daily lessons, creating original assessments so they are meaningful. I think that's important. Um, yep, yeah, right. Students don't always find it interesting to learn vocab, right? Um, reading comprehension skills of students need to be at a level for the vocabulary. Um, what is an essential question that we have about this finding due to the work we are undertaking? Um, for the question about a topic, how can technology aid our learning? How can we choose the most effective vocabulary strategies? How can we identify the best methods to assess vocabulary at each unit? Are certain alternative assessments more useful for a unit based around engineering rather than programming and vice versa? So, um, if you know if there are alternative assessments, is it more useful than in a different content area? Um, does correct vocabulary impact engagement? 
having critical debates, debates around the use of technology using Socratic seminar activity. So this is where I had them identify um, their item they picked first, and then why did they select this finding, and what best practice to have vocabulary assessment work can be informed by the finding. So vocabulary learning and effective uh, allows students to show how they understand the vocabulary through application. The best practice related to that is providing students with multiple avenues to interact with the vocabulary and try, in order to draw stronger connections with the meaning. Finding vocabulary learning is effective when it entails active engagement that goes beyond definitional knowledge. So here, the students this allows students to show how they understand the vocabulary through application. Best practice provides students with multiple avenues to interact with the vocabulary. Vocabulary can be acquired through incidental learning. Students can learn the meaning of words and they are exposed to them in different ways. Best practice, it, very, it is helpful to have structured read-alouds and discussion sessions that include vocabulary words. Finding repetition and multiple exposure to vocabulary items are important. I selected this finding because it emphasizes the importance of seeing vocabulary words in multiple contexts. I think that this can mean seeing words in multiple contexts, but also experience the words in multiple ways. So the idea here is that to set up assessments and involve deeper understanding of the word, have it be progressive, start with a definition, and then progress to a more complex meaning or implementation of the word. Seeing the definition of a computer component, understanding what the computer, computing component does, and learning where the part fits into a computer. So different layers of understanding um, with an activity in context. So this finding, providing direct instruction, the importance of direct instruction, vocabulary words that I explicitly introduce are ones that are necessary to the understanding of the field of robotics, not a specific text, but a, fi a specific field. Students should be consciously aware of what we are doing and why we are doing it, why these words. I think that's great too, just why we have the focus. Provide students with a breakdown of the specific vocabulary that you are focusing on for the unit. So vocabulary is effective when it entails active engagement that goes beyond definitional knowledge. I've seen that when kids interact with content in a hands-on way, they are more likely to use it and understand it in the proper context. Um, a good practice here is set up lessons using the PBL project-based learning as a guide. So we continue to kind of go into additional findings, which ones they find a second. So how does, can, you know, the best practices related to computer technology um, being effective, dependence on a single vocabulary instruction. So technology can be used to create a variety of assessments varying vocabulary instruction, finding ways to assess vocabulary in, in ways that are not just rote memorization, figuring out methods where you can check for deeper understanding, the finding around active engagement, provide re visual representations whenever possible, the finding vocabulary words should be those that the learner will find useful in many contexts. This is usually used when I combine lecture with class discussions in a think pair share activity. So these educators definitely benefited from Thinking about a finding related to tiered vocabulary and, you, and focusing on vocabulary as an integral part of teaching computer science. Um, and this is the, the first step towards getting teachers to understand how these terms can then connect to how they're teaching. You know, so I think within this, we saw different levels of instruction utilizing the vocabulary from introducing the concept to providing examples for how the students are learning the concept, um, what the focus of using the vocabulary would be in instruction, and also began to address student needs related to understanding the vocabulary, whether it's a, um, a reading comprehension topic or it's is it embedded within a project. So I really found this process to be really beneficial towards taking tiered vocabulary concepts and starting to think about how they can be integrated. Thanks again for checking out the video. I appreciate you checking it out. Please like and subscribe if, you're, if you enjoyed it and be in contact with me if you're interested in any of these strategies. Thanks.